Welcome. In this video, we're going to be working this uh, image of the flower here a lot of different ways. And honestly, it's rotated the wrong way. So I'm just going to quickly do an image and image rotation and choose 90 degrees. There we go. And I'll tell it to right click and fit on screen. All right, so there we are. This image uh, of the flower looks pretty cool. And what I'm going to do is show you how to use uh, these different lasso tools. So under the third tool down, you'll find your lasso. And we have the regular lasso, the polygonal lasso, or polygonal, I've heard it that way too, uh, and the magnetic lasso. Now, the standard lasso tool, honestly, I don't use it that much if I use a mouse. I just don't have the control to follow things with a mouse, OK? The way you use it is to click and hold it down to select something. I'm going to deselect by doing select, deselect. I could also press Control D. Instead, I'm going to use the lasso tool pretty much exclusively with one of my uh, my digital pens, OK? So with my tablet, I can do a lot better job of drawing around it. And you might go through and at some point you, I don't know, you lift up, you hiccup, somebody makes you laugh, something happens and you screwed up. It's like, oh no, I'm not done. I, I have more to do. I missed the spot. Well, this is where some of the modifiers come in. Now there are modifier buttons that you can use. They're up here. This one will, if you just hover over it here and it'll tell you a little tool tip, it says add to selection. This one here will subtract from selection and then this one here will intersect with selection so if I want to add more of the flower in I would click this one and notice that on my tool I have a little plus sign that means I am adding to it so now I just start from inside the existing marching ants and continue around until I get a little area done so I'm just kind of going around the edge of this. And this is not very hard to do once you get the hang of using that pen. Now, uh, you could also subtract. You know, maybe you're working here and, oh, I got, see, I accidentally got part of the grass. I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. Well, no problem. You just switch over to the subtract and you can subtract it. I'm going to start from outside. I'm going to envelop that area. So I start from outside and envelop. It doesn't matter how far I go. I can go all out here and make little names or whatever I wanted to do. It's just going to remove that one little spot. Okay. Uh, enveloping is that word that you want to be using in this situation where it uh, will, the entire area, doesn't have how far on the parts that's not selected. It's just the part that you have selected. And the same thing goes for the um, add tool. See, I can add something out here and to connect them I need to start anywhere inside and you see that connects it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and return to my normal one. Now, oh, the intersect one, uh, I can show you that really quickly. I'm going to definitely step backward though. It gives you an X on your thing and when it does it's going to do like kind of like a Venn diagram. So it's going to end up doing this part in the middle between those. You see, you see how that worked? I do not like that. I'm going to step backward. Okay, and I'm going to return to the original one. Now, it's kind of clumsy going up here and changing this all the time. So my suggestion to you is to leave it on the existing first option where it just creates a new selection every time. Then what you can do is use your tablet on the Alt, the button in the uh, with the divot, the little hole in it, um, or the uh, other button. The one above it is uh, shift. Okay, so you have alt, which is the dot, and then shift is the other one. So you see how these are moving when I'm pressing the buttons on the tablet. You can also use the buttons on the regular keyboard as well. So shift adds to selection, alt subtracts from selection. And that way you can always do one or the other. You don't even have to um, hit these buttons. You can just go to them automatically. Now the neat things about the shift and the alt is that that's honestly something that comes throughout the program when you want to add the other things or you know it, it's just it, shift and alt shift means more uh, alt means less that's pretty much how it goes so I'm going to just move back and forth and if I ever screw up and do oh I did a little extra didn't mean to no problem I'll just switch over to alt and take that out so you see you can just walk your way around the object and I'm going to see if I can get done really quickly and I'm doing okay, I guess. 
maybe it's not perfect, but try to your best to get it really on the money. Okay, and then I want to go all the way in here and up. Okay, so now that I have this uh, flower selected, okay, I'm going to um, want to do a copy and paste just to see it by itself. Okay, there are uh, honestly other methods we're going to be using, but I want you to just see what it looks like by itself. So I'm going to do an edit, copy, edit, paste. Now what it's going to do is create a new layer, and this new layer I'm going to rename as lasso. Okay, and you can turn off the eye on the background layer, and you'll see what it looks like. I did an okay job. Okay. Now make sure that you return to the background layer because we want to always go back to the original layer where all the contents are. Okay, because selecting things, it matters what layer you're on. You have to be on the layer that actually has the pixels. So, in uh, this second part, what I want to do is switch to the next tool to show you how that works: the polygonal lasso. Now, ordinarily, the polygonal lasso would not be a good uh, fit for this situation. It'd be a good fit for maybe doing uh, more hard edge objects like a building. Okay, but I can still show you how it works. Now this one works a little different. You don't drag it, you tap. So you start by tapping and you get this ray, this line coming out any direction. Well, you just kind of tap around everywhere you tap. It creates little angles. So you see it is a useful tool for creating angles. Um, when you get going on this, sometimes people don't know how to get it to stop. You're like, I can't get it to stop. Well, to get it to stop, you can go near the beginning and you'll see this little O. You see that? That'll get it to stop. Okay. You can um, you can also use the same tools. I'm going to hold down Shift again. I'm going to add to it this time. Start going around the other side. When you hold down Shift, I don't know if you notice how it's kind of sticking to certain angles. It doesn't do the in-betweens. So if you want it exactly 45, you can hold down Shift. But anyway, you don't have to hold Shift the whole time to add. You can just hold it for a second. You'll get the plus sign. And you can keep going and go any angle you need to get. But now, here's the deal. Let's say you're going and you're trying to get it to complete the selection. You don't remember where the beginning is. Well, no problem. You can double tap. You can double tap on your mouse, double tap on your pen, or the easiest thing to do is on the pen, we have those buttons, the, the rocker switch. We'll hit the top one, the eraser side button, and it'll do a double tap, and it will put the picture together. Oh, I did it twice. <laughs> anyway, I'll just step backward. All right. So um, that's the polygonal lasso. And you want to go ahead and add the whole thing in. And we'll see how that ends up looking. Just tapping around. Obviously, I'm doing a quick job here. All right. Because obviously, you wouldn't use that for this one. So now I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do Control C. Make sure you're on the background. And I'm going to do a Control V after I click on the lasso layer. I'm going to hit Control V so I'll have this one on top. And I'm going to double click its name. And I'm going to call this one Polygon. Oh, there we go. All right. So now that one, if I turn off the eyes on the other ones, you can kind of see the difference. Much more angular definitely rough. You would use that for a situation where you want to select a building or something straight. Okay. Then you have the magnetic lasso. I'm returning to the background layer and I'm going to switch to my magnetic lasso. Okay. So I'm on the background and magnetic. Now the magnetic lasso kind of, you just click to start it once and then you hover. You're just moving. And what it's doing is it's going to use the differences in color and the differences in uh, contrast to determine where you want the end to be. Now you don't always, it doesn't always do it exactly right. So every now and then just tap. I'm not tapping at all very often, but every now and then when it's confused and the little line's bouncing different ways and it doesn't know where to go, I'll tap, okay? So like up here, it's probably gonna get confused when I get near this green thing. So I'm gonna tap there in the corner and then go around the top. Oh, didn't get quite at the top, so I'm gonna go back and tap it. Oh, didn't get that outside part, go back. I see it keeps trying to go inside it. And that happens. You can always go back and add as well. And you see how it just kind of jumps, you know, just magnetically connects to that line so that you can create a good selection. And, you know, honestly, it's a pretty good tool. There are definitely other tools that work better for different situations, but the magnetic lasso is pretty versatile. All right. 
and it just kind of goes around. And then you get rid of this the same way that you do the polygonal. You can go right back to the beginning and tap, or you can use the back button. And uh, in my case, I'm just going to go back to the beginning because I'm there. And you see the little zero, the little O in the corner. It means I can close that selection. Now, uh, let's say you're really trying to make a great selection in here, and you're like, God, I can't do that. And, you know, that magnetic lasso just didn't do a good job there. It's not a problem. You can mix and match your selections. You can be working in one selection tool and switch to another one. I can switch over here to the lasso tool, hold down shift, and add this little part up at the top. I can subtract this little part here where it got confused and used too much and fix my selection exactly how I want it. Now let's go ahead and do a copy of this one as well. So I'm going to do Edit Copy or Control C. And then I'm going to hit Edit Paste or Control V. I'm going to drag it up to the top because I forgot to go on the top layer. So I'm going to put it on the top and rename it by double clicking as well. And we're going to call this one Magnetic. All right. So now the thing I'm going to be looking for on this project is that you have each of these layers labeled and in this order. And I want to see them individually. So you can turn off the background layer when you save it. And I want to be able to turn them on one at a time when I go to look at your picture and see, oh, that's right. Up, oh, that's right. Up, oh, that's right. Okay, so that's what I want to be able to do. So go ahead and leave them on like that. Leave the background off and go ahead and save this into your folder.